Although constant maintenance is going to keep your trusty steed working in poor conditions, when it gets to the middle of winter, especially if it's wet and cold where you are, you're going to need a bit of backup. So we're going to take you through some of the best upgrades you can make to your bike and yourself this winter to get the most out of riding your mountain bike. And best of all, they're all under 50 quid, which is about 60 euros or 65 US dollars. Okay, so first up is gonna be a mud guard. Now, quite often, you get questioned why you don't have mud guards on your mountain bike. Well, quite obviously, mud guards will get in the way. They're not gonna fit all mountain bike designs, and they're just gonna hinder riding style. However, having a front mud guard is actually quite a necessity if you ride in wet and muddy conditions. And the reason for that, quite simply, is to keep the mud out your face, out of the vision, the bits that keep you facing forwards on the trail. Hurtling through trees at 30 miles an hour and not being able to see very well doesn't bode well for you. Now there are plenty of options available on the market, ranging from the very minimal and very affordable, all the way through to those that even have adjustable mud clearance. Okay, so the first option available to you are the really simple flaps like this. Um, quite simply put, they zip tie or cable tie onto your fork brace and onto the legs of the fork. You get longer ones, you get smaller ones like this one. They're very minimal, they're very cheap, they're ideal to keep in your riding bag, keep one in your workshop. Now, they're not gonna offer the most amount of protection, but they're ideal compromise. And they're really good if you ride in muddy conditions that aren't crazy. We're not talking like Danny Hart or Champere, we're talking a bit more just regular down the woods. Nice and simple, great value for money. And there's lots of options available on the market, including some that are even earth friendly, made from recycled fishing nets. So keep your eye out for those, really cool. Next up are these sorts of things. Now, there's a lot of different brands on the market. They offer significantly more protection than using the very bare minimal flap there. Now, this is a medium sized one. As you can see here, this is a much longer offering. So if you're riding in conditions with loads of spray, these are excellent at keeping the water off your goggles. Now, again, they simply fasten onto the bike using cable ties on the brace and on the legs on the side here. Nice and simple, and you can slightly change the angle of them to keep them at the optimal angle so they don't clog up with mud at the front. If cable ties put you off, you could go for something that offers full protection like this. Now, this is a very different style mud guard. Firstly, it uses uh, rubber O-rings basically to hold it in place. So these are replaceable, but the idea is you can put it on and you can take it off as many times as you need to for traveling, stuff like that, so you're not gonna damage it in the boot of your cart, for example. It also means you're not gonna damage your paintwork because cable ties can, if you're repeatedly putting them on and off, they can drag on your paint a little bit. Also, the benefit of this design is it's got a split design in the middle here. If, like us, you ride in really thick, claggy mud like clay, sometimes this style of mudguard can be a bit of an issue with clogging. However, this particular one, this is the Crud XL, you can actually run these quite high and have a significant gap between the top of the tire and the mud guard itself, so it's never gonna clog up. So that's a really cool idea. So that's a few different options available to you. And one extra top tip that you need to take into account is a rear mud guard. You might have seen on Sam Hill's bike and a few other racers' bikes, they're running short versions of these style mud guards, much shorter than these. And the aim of these is to stop the mud collecting on the bike. Now this does a couple of things. Firstly, mud is really heavy when it bunches up around your bottom bracket and stuff. You can be adding several pounds of weight to your bike when you're riding. But more importantly, that repeated spray around your bearings and around your shock can wreak havoc with them. So if you've got a suspension design where a lot of that stuff is exposed and you're able to fit a rear mud guard, just a little fender to protect the gubbins, get on with it, does a great job. Now next up is a mud friendly tire. Note that I say a tire because for 50 quid, you're not really gonna get a pair of tires, but you don't always have to have a pair of tires. The most crucial part of bike control off-road is your front tire. So our recommendation at GMBN Tech is to make sure that your front tire in the winter season is something that's very open, very aggressive, something like this, that's gonna be easy to cut in and give you traction for cornering and basically under braking as well, because you're not gonna actually get any traction with those knobs and, and lugs on a tire if it's basically completely hard packed with mud on there. It's a really good idea and you can actually save yourself a bit of money here as well. So you have a summer set and you have a winter set. So typically on the summer set, the rear tire will be slightly harder compound and faster rolling. On the front, you might have something a little more chunky for a bit more traction. Now that works really well in the faster conditions, but when it comes to winter, 
Sack off that rear tyre, put the front tyre on the rear, and then get yourself a mud-friendly tyre on the front. So you've got a slightly more aggressive system all round. And that's just by having three tyres, so you've got two different setups there. Saves you the extra cash that you would spend on a single tyre, and it does mean that you can get yourself a really heavy-duty front tyre for loads of grip, loads of confidence on wet roots, rock, and mud. Works a treat. Next up for winter is a quality wet lubricant for your chain and your transmission because when it comes to winter, dry lube just can't hack it. So do yourself a favor, get yourself a really heavy duty, viscous, wet lubricant. Now this will attract more dirt and grime to your chain, but also it's really, really waterproof and it's gonna stay there doing its job a lot longer. And a couple of top tips with wet lube as well, it's really good if you have clipless pedals to put some on the mechanisms and the springs after you've been riding in wet conditions. The wet lube helps it stay there. It's much better than just using a sort of water displacing spray, which granted will have a corrosion inhibitor, but a wet lube actually on those springs and mechanisms makes them work really well all winter long. And also whilst you're at it, it's worth having two sets of wet lube. Keep one at home with your regular workshop stuff and keep one in a bucket ready to go in the car if you go riding using your car, alongside a bucket, a brush, and the other stuff. And it means you can clean your bike wherever you are. There's always a tap, there's always a way of getting some water. And it means if you go riding before going home, you can give your bike a decent rinse down and a lube. It means when you get home and it's hammering down the rain, you can just take your bike inside and get on with whatever you fancy. Okay, frame protection is next up. Now, although this is nothing to do with winter specifics, in winter, you are definitely gonna cause some damage to your paintwork, so it's a good idea to consider this before things get too muddy and hectic out there. Now, in winter, with the nature of off-road riding, you might be wearing some trousers or some waterproof trousers. From time to time, your legs are gonna rub on the top tube. So, get yourself one of these sort of kits available. There's loads on the market from InvisiFrame kits to these AMS custom ones, these are quite cool and they're kind of favoured by like the EWS style racers that are mounting them on the top tubes because it looks like a bit of a fashion accessory. Now the other area to pay attention to in particular for winter is outside of your seat stays and your chain stays. The reason for that is your shoes are going to get clumps of mud all over them and it becomes really easy when you're just moving around on a bike to brush your feet past the chain stays and the seat stays. Now, if you want to save a bit of money and this sort of stuff you're not that fussed about, a cheaper option for you is to consider looking at getting a roll of 3M heli tape. You get this in 50 millimeters wide, you get it on online auction sites, places like Amazon and stuff. Now, it's not that expensive, but you're going to have to do a lot more work to fit it. These are pre-cut, they're pre-shaped, they've got the optimal amount of glue on them to let them do their job and sit on your bike. Obviously, that's going to work, but the 3M tape requires a lot more effort than you. But nonetheless, it's a great option for you. A chain cleaner and some degreaser. Now, two things to say here. Firstly, let's look at the degreaser. Get yourself something that's environmentally friendly. You're going to use a lot of this stuff and you want to use stuff that's nice and calm to the environment. It's not going to be harmful in any way, but it's going to keep your chain and your transmission spick and span. And now for the actual chain cleaner, all right, hands up, this is the Park Tools Full Metal Workshop spec one. It's a bit more than 50 quid, but there are lots of other options available to you on the market, ranging from about 10 quid, and that's about 12 euros or 15 US dollars upwards. Now, a cool top tip you can do to save yourself a few quid as well is once you've filled up your chain cleaner and you've cleaned the chain, don't just get rid of the degreaser in there. So get yourself an old glass jar, jam jar, something like that, and decant that used degreaser into the jar, and then clean your actual chain cleaner up and save it for next time. Put your nice bottle of fresh degreaser on the shelf and leave that for a while because you won't need it straight away because you can get a bit more use out of the old degreaser. Leave it on the shelf, uh, basically don't touch it. And what you'll find is all the sort of the, the stuff that's in it, you know, the muck, the mud, the grit, all the nasty stuff will gradually start sinking down. Now, the, the fluid is not gonna go completely clear like you would see with uh, Terps and White Spirit and things like that, but it's definitely gonna be able to be used several more times before you get rid of it. Just make sure you don't go pouring all the horrible stuff back into your chain cleaner. Okay, next up are lights. Now, of course, you're not gonna be able to get this sort of thing for under 50 quid, but what I do mean is the sort of lights you can use on your daily bike, on your commuter bike, the bike that you ride to work, the bike that you ride to college. Obviously, in the darker months, it's really important for visibility to be safe and have a set of lights. Now, in the older days, you used to have to rely on lights, you have to change the batteries using like C-cells or uh, AA's or AAA's, and of course, that's not the best way to do it. Lights these days are largely chargeable one way or another. 
Now this option here is a really good one because it has a clip you can put it on a bag, you can put it on the back of your riding jersey. It's small enough that you can keep it in your jersey when you're out riding and afterwards when you're plastered in mud then you can take it out and clip it on and it'll be nice and clean and get you home nice and safely. Other options to consider are smaller ones that can be insanely bright and powerful and they also charge by directly plugging them into USB ports of your computer. Now these sorts of things, they come in many shapes and sizes by different brands. They're excellent for your dailies. Look for the features that you need. Just make sure your lights are robust, make sure they're waterproof or weather resistant, and make sure that you can charge them easily. Okay, next up is something to clean your eyewear with. Now of course, a lot of riders are gonna favor using goggles or like myself, I use a clear set of riding glasses in winter to keep mud away from my eyes and also to keep the cool air away because I find my eyes water quite a lot in cold weather. Now cleaning them can be a bit of a problem. I've used some household liquids before and sometimes they actually make them fog up quite badly. So having something dedicated for cleaning your eyewear is a great idea. Now this one's from Muck Off. There's various different ones available on the market and you can even get anti-fog spray if that's something you suffer with. If you run on hot, for example, you might find on those long climbs you're fogging up a little bit. So anti-fog treatment is definitely something worth looking at. Fresh tire sealant. Now in winter, things get extremely mucky and you wanna avoid any possible chance of getting a puncture. So if you're running a tubeless setup, now's the time to top up on your sealant. Make sure you choose the same brand unless you wanna take it all out. Basically you start fresh with a clean inside a tire. Uh, there's loads available on the market. There's Orange Seal, there's Stan's No Tubes, there's Joe's No Flats, there's PT's, there's Continental. There's loads of stuff available on the market. So get yourself some new tire sealant. And what I actually recommend doing in winter is slightly overfilling. So if they recommend doing a cup sized amount, I'd actually go for two in the rear and one and a half in the front. Uh, just the rear end takes a bit more abuse. You're more likely to burp it, stuff like that. But it's a good idea to have a little bit more just to maximize the chances of any puncture sealing up. So you don't have to get your gloves in your hands mucky trying to fix a puncture at the side of the trail. Make your life easier. Well, there we go. There's a whole bunch of winter upgrades all under the approximate price of 50 quid and they're definitely all good for your bike and they're going to enhance your winter riding experience. If you've got any other cool ideas, let us know in the comments underneath as always. For a couple more useful videos, click down here for ways that you are trashing your bike. That's all stuff that you do not want to be doing. That's going to cost you money. Uh, don't forget to give us a thumbs up here at GMBN Tech. Uh, leave us some comments underneath there hit the subscribe button and hit the bell. Ding, ding.